If you're watching this video, then chances are you have some questions about boundaries in love. What are they? How do you create them? And how do you navigate the boundaries of other people? We're gonna cover all that and more in this video. So keep watching. Hi, I'm Lucy Goldman from Love Learnings. I'm a commitment and dating expert, and I've made it my mission to offer simple advice backed by science and common sense. We do the research so you don't have to. Subscribe right now for a new video every week. Now, let's talk about what boundaries are. Boundaries are limits between you and another person. A boundary is a spoken or unspoken barrier between you and someone else that cannot be crossed without consequence. Boundaries can deal with physical or emotional space. They help you keep some separation between you and other people around you to show you where you end and another person begins. The purpose of setting a healthy boundary is to protect your own health, safety, and peace of mind. For example, your boss calling you on the weekends can be considered a boundary violation. Your mom asking you about your sex life or a friend showing up unannounced to stay with you for a week. All of these boundaries are so socially ingrained that you'd be shocked if someone was to cross them. Boundaries help us define our social lives and let us know what to expect and how to act. These tend to be very clearly defined, although unspoken, within family and work relationships. But when it comes to love and dating, these boundaries are often much less clear. But do we have boundaries in romantic relationships at all? There are plenty of people who preach that a relationship is two people becoming one. It's about crossing that gulf and connecting with another person. And while that's all true, boundaries actually serve a very important function in love and relationships. They allow us to explore our intimacy within well delineated bounds. This means that if you know where the line is, you're free to explore the space between the two of you without being afraid to cross it. Boundaries in essence actually allow more freedom than you'd have without them by providing structure to your relationship and creating space between yourself and your partner. But before you get carried away setting up boundaries in your relationship, you need to be aware of a key distinction. There is a huge difference between walls and boundaries. Walls are put up without awareness, usually driven by a past trauma. They restrict your ability to connect and they prevent you from achieving true intimacy. Boundaries are about recognizing your own needs and wants and setting yourself up for success within your relationship. Boundaries are also more flexible and open to changing over time, whereas walls are inflexible and when you come up against them, it causes friction, miscommunications and hurt feelings. A good boundary is proactive, meaning they've been planned out beforehand, whereas a wall is reactive, meaning you don't know it's there until you've smacked right into it. We're great at setting boundaries early on in relationships. For example, not having sex on the first date, waiting the appropriate amount of time before saying I love you, not spending every waking moment together when you've only known each other a few weeks. As we move closer together and our inhibitions fade away, boundaries become harder to navigate. The question becomes, how close should we get to one another? For example, you won't meet my friends. We're not gonna be official and don't even think about calling me during daylight hours. Are all pretty reasonable boundaries to have in a friends with benefits scenario. But these same boundaries are extremely harsh when it comes to an actual relationship. So if you're currently in a relationship, it's no surprise that you may be having boundary issues. Maybe you're looking to set up some more clear boundaries with your partner, or maybe you're looking to understand ones that are already there. Let's look at your current boundaries in your relationship. Before we talk about your partner's boundaries, let's start by talking about your own. Start by thinking about behaviors in relationships and dating that have made you uncomfortable. What's a time that someone crossed a line? Examples of a boundary in a relationship is not wanting to meet their family until the time is right, not answering texts while you're at work, or having a few nights to yourself a week. When someone crosses one of these boundaries, it throws up red flags in our minds and makes us feel threatened. This is the key to helping you understand your partner's boundaries. Think back to some times that your partner was upset by your behavior even though you were just trying to connect with them. 
What's something that you've been pushing your partner for that they've been resistant to? I'll give you some examples from my own clients to jog your memory. Here are some areas that have caused stress on their relationships due to inadequate boundaries. Keeping secrets. Are you allowed to have your own secrets in your relationship or are you supposed to tell each other everything? What about your PIN number or having a password on your phone? These are things you need to decide for yourself. Don't be pressured by your partner to reveal something you're not comfortable with. In turn, allow your partner to have their own privacy. I think you'll find that you're both more forthcoming when you know that sharing is something that you're choosing to do rather than having it forced on you. Controlling your body. Does your partner get upset if you get a haircut or otherwise change up your style? What about the medication you choose to take or not? Remember that bodily autonomy is important and while you should consider their feelings, ultimately the decision is up to you. Not allowing you your freedom in this regard can be a major boundary violation. How frequently to be in contact? This is a big one that I find creates tension in relationships. Oftentimes, one of you has the idea of how plugged in the two of you should be at any given time. When someone crosses that boundary into needy or suffocating behavior, that can be a major boundary violation. The truth is, is that we have boundaries in every aspect of our relationships, and it's only by looking at them clearly that we're able to navigate them successfully. Which brings us to our next topic, how to set boundaries. While it may be a downer to set boundaries with your partner, if you're able to do it successfully, it can avoid a whole lot of hurt feelings and other problems down the line. But before you go prepare a big speech for your significant other, let's take a step back. First off, I want to say that plenty of boundaries can only be discovered by crossing them. This can be a scary idea, but the truth is that oftentimes neither of you knew that a particular action was going to cross the line until it happened. This is why I need you to understand that boundary infractions are inevitable. It's all part of the process of building a connection with someone. So be forgiving with your partner when they cross your boundaries, but use these moments as an opportunity to recognize and reinforce the boundary. For example, say your boyfriend shows up to your house uninvited in the middle of the night just to check in. He thought he was being romantic, but it made you uncomfortable. Say something like, I would like it if you would call first before coming over. I don't like being surprised. And it can be as simple as that. Most people are pretty sensitive to the boundaries of others and they won't make the same mistake twice. And speaking of mistakes, let's talk about our next tip. Use I statements. This one is super important, guys. When you start a sentence with you instead of I, it makes the person you're speaking to feel attacked and judged. When you start with I, it helps them feel empathy towards you and understand you better. For example, say your boyfriend ate your lunch that you had in the fridge for work the next day. Instead of saying, you ate my lunch, you never ask me before rooting through my fridge, you can say something like, I'd appreciate it if you asked before eating the food in my fridge. I needed that lunch for work tomorrow. You see how that is less confrontational and does a better job of stating your feelings? My next tip is a difficult one for a lot of people and that is get used to saying no. I know it's never pleasant to turn your boyfriend down when he asks for something, but you need to balance your desire to make him happy and your own boundaries. You don't need to be rude or negative with him. Just be firm in your wishes and stick to your guns if he pushes back. On to the next tip. Don't be afraid to change your boundaries over time. This is something that many people don't realize. You and your partner's boundaries will naturally shift and change as the relationship progresses. This is so perfectly natural and doesn't make you flaky. So allow yourself to reverse your stance on an issue or allow behavior that you'd previously ruled off the table if your feelings change. This kind of flexibility will encourage your partner to be flexible as well, and this can lead to a better connection long term but it will only work if you follow my next tip. Talk about it. If you and your partner are having frequent arguments and misunderstandings, it may be time you have to have a serious talk about your boundaries. 
put some more firm rules in place around certain behaviors and subject to create some stability in your relationship. This can be a difficult and awkward conversation, but it beats having a big blow up and fight. Let's move to our next tip. Let your partner know when they've breached your boundaries. If you're upset with your partner, the best thing you can do is let them know. I don't advise being negative or harsh with your criticism, but having the conversation is definitely necessary. Because if you never tell them that they've crossed a boundary, then why would their behavior change? With that in mind, just remember your I statements and you'll be fine. Now moving on to our last and final tip. Ask, don't assume. This is something that can help prevent you from crossing your partner's boundaries. Instead of just assuming that you have their permission to do whatever you're about to do, make a point of asking them if it's okay. You'll be surprised by how their attitude changes when you give them an option instead of making a decision for them. That about does it for this video, folks. I've barely scratched the surface on boundaries and relationships, but I hope you found something useful here. If you have any questions about boundaries, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.